Hi everyone, in this video let's have a look at StyleGAN which is a style based generator architecture for generative adversarial networks. We all know that GANs are composed of a generator and a discriminator. So the contribution of this paper is in the generator architecture. So they propose an architecture where you can precisely control the synthesis of the image that is generated. When I say control the synthesis, they say that the, we can clearly separate the pose identity, face, the hair, the color of the face and everything. Just how you use sliders in your user interface in HTML, they say that you can control the, the style of the image that you're generating using this architecture that they are proposing. On top of this architecture, they also come up with a data set which they call Flickr Faces HQ which is just 70,000 images of very high resolution and they also uh, these images are of very high quality and very high diversity in, ter in terms of uh, the pose in terms of uh, the background or the color of the face now before we look at style GANs let's have a look at GANs and get a understanding of what's the problem or what's the shortcomings of GANs. So let's take this example where we have a MNIST data set and we sample a batch from the MNIST data set and then we pass it through a discriminator which squeezes this input image into a vector uh, which can readily be compared. And then you have a generator to which you feed a noise vector which does exactly the opposite and converts these noise vectors into images and you pass these generated images to the discriminator as well and the discriminator decides whether it's a real image or a fake image so what is the main problem with the GANs then so the main problem is that you have no control of the style of the image that's been generated or in other words you just feed a noise vector and and wait for the generator to churn out images now with that in mind let's have a look at the style gan architecture so the main addition or the contribution of the style gan architecture is the mapping network uh, which takes as input the latent vector and then maps it to another vector they call this W. And then the second contribution or the change that's been introduced by the StyleGAN architecture is the affine transformation A and the adaptive normalization ADA in. That's as you can see from the, from the green ellipse that's been here. And the third contribution of the StyleGAN architecture is these noise vectors along with the um, transformations B. So these noise vectors, uh, if you remember from GAN, that you just pass one input vec noise vector on top of the uh, your CNN layers. But um, in this modified architecture, they pass four noise vectors at different stages of your convolution layers. And that is the main change uh, in terms of the noise input that you provide uh, to the network. One of the main variations uh, or contributions of StyleGAN is the introduction of adaptive instance normalization. So before we understand adaptive instance normalization, let's briefly look at batch normalization uh, because adaptive instance normalization is just derived from batch normalization. So if you look at the equation for batch normalization, you have uh, input x, uh, Batch normalization computes the, the mean and standard deviation of x and then it also has parameters um, gamma and beta which is a scale factor and translation factor respectively. So instance normalization uh, is a breakdown or, a or batch normalization for specific instance xi of a batch so you can treat each sample in a batch separately with instance normalization uh, rather than batch normalization where you have an entire batch which been used for computing this mean and standard deviation sigma 
Uh, so adaptive instance normalization is a further specialization of this instance normalization where now you have the input xi and you also have another input yi and your xi is the features uh, from the previous layer convolutions and y is composed of ys and yb basically so ys is your scale factor and yb is the translation factor um, so your style y comes from um, these vectors uh, which is nothing but the weight vectors and your convolutional features come from x come from the previous convolution layers they both are fed into adaptive normalization and because y has control over the scale and also y has control over the translation of the features uh, you say that you have control over the output images that are generated and these are in turn um, control the style uh, of the image that's being generated uh, by your network and there you have the architecture for your uh, style gam one of the nicest thing about this paper is that they clearly explain how the architecture evolved from a baseline architecture which is a progressive GAN. So as a first step what they do is they introduce bilinear uh, up and down sampling to the progressive GAN architecture. Straight away by doing that they notice an improvement uh, in the performance. This is the FID score. Uh, if you're not aware of FID score please uh, watch out for my other video which explains about how to benchmark GANs. Uh, so as a next step what they do is they add this mapping on the styles so this is the mapping network that they add as step c and they introduce also these styles as part of uh, this modification and they noticed a further improvement in the performance just by making this change and once they made this change they noticed that the traditional uh, traditional input Z that you feed here on top of the network doesn't perform well. So what they do is they introduce this constant tensor which uh, improves the performance further and takes, uh, and takes it to a better performance of 5.07. And finally, they also introduce this noise inputs uh, at the side uh, which is uh, using uh, these affine transformations B and they notice further improvement in the performance and as a last step they also try out mixing regularization which seems to prefer further improve the performance and reaches the best performance. Uh, the idea of mixing regularization is quite new to this paper so let's have a look at that. So in mixing regularization instead of passing just one latent vector Z as input and getting one vector w as output you pass at least two z1 and z2 and you get two vectors w1 and w2 as output and you pass those two to randomly chosen input styles here you can see that you pass z1 to the red ellipse input and z2 to the blue ellipse input and in the next iteration you pass you choose completely random points or random styles and again pass w1 to for example the red ellipse input styles here and the blue ellipse inputs here uh, take input of w2 and by just randomly passing these vectors w1 and w2 uh, they see improvement in localization of the mixing regularization uh, so this is the result that they are showing for the mixing regularization uh, they say uh, over here on the left is the amount of training that they do with mixing regularization and also here is the number of latent uh, vectors that means uh, one stands for just using w1 and four stands for uh, using w1 to four for the four styles and they see the best performance um, during testing comes out of uh, using the most number of uh, mixing regularization vectors 
and they state that this clearly this these numbers clearly indicate the improvement in localization performance this is one of the interesting results presented in the paper what they do is they generate a set of images called source a and they generate another set of images called source b now you have a set of latent vectors corresponding to the these images generated now they combine these latent vectors at different scales and they see how combining these latent vectors results in different uh, appearance of the images. What they notice is that when you mix the coarser level vector of A with that of the B, you notice that there are changes in pose and hairstyle of the images generated. But if you mix the final details or the final level details of the latent vector A, with that of B, you notice change in color scheme and microstructures, which are very subtle uh, compared to the changes that happened uh, when you change the coarser level features. Let's move on to studying the impact of the noise vector now, which is the other input to the network. The st style GAN takes as input four noise vectors. Uh, on the other side of the network. So in one of the other results, they studied how changing this noise vector impacts the image. So as you can see here, uh, as we change the noise vector, uh, they notice subtle changes to say the hairstyle, but the major appearance and the pose of the generated images does not change. So this indicates that the noise vector has much more subtle effect now in the image generation compared to a GAN why the noise vector has a huge impact on the image images generated and in fact changing the noise vector changes uh, a the Im entire image completely and you get an entirely different image uh, of a different person when it comes to GAN but in case of style GAN the changes are extremely subtle This is another result presented in the paper. So what they do is uh, they add noise at different uh, levels of the network and they do not add noise at all the levels. And they notice that when you add noise at the fine levels, you get fine or subtle changes uh, in the image. Uh, but when you add no noise at all to the, in, uh, to the, to the network, then the generated image is very blurry uh, without any uh, prominent features and they also add noise to the coarser level and examine how it compares when you add noise at the final la layers of the network thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and leave your comments below about what papers you would like explained